Mr. President has declined assent to the bill on account of the fact that the bill as it stands is inconsistent with the, uh, he, has, he has stated about five, six, seven reasons in his communication to the Senate and the House of Representatives. And let me, before I go far, state that ordinarily I'm not supposed to speak on this matter until the letter or communication from Mr. President stating the reasons are read on the floor of the Senate and the House of Representatives to the principal addressees, the senators and, house, and members of the House of Representatives. But because the House and the Senate had proceeded on vacation on the 24th of July, 2018, and Mr. President's letter was uh, written and delivered on the 29th of July, 2018, when the House was not in session. And the news of the withholding of assent broke on the 29th of August, that is one month after the withholding of assent, it has become necessary for me to speak on this matter, perhaps a little bit not, not so much in accord with convention. Now, Mr. President is stating, and I'm only going to state only two or three, very few of the uh, reasons that Mr. President has stated in his communication to the uh, National Assembly. He's saying that the funding provisions of the uh, Petroleum Industry Bill is excessive and will deprive the uh, tiers of government of revenue which is meant for them. Recall that the Petroleum, Nigeria Petroleum Regulatory Commission, Section 26 of Clause 26 of the bill, the Nigeria Petroleum Regulatory Commission is to is a merger of the Petroleum Inspectorate, Department of Petroleum Resources and the Petroleum Product Pricing and Regulatory Agency. And hitherto and currently, there is a means of funding these agencies which is, although it is high, but it is tolerably uh, accommodable. Now, as of today, the funding provisions uh, and these agencies are to work on the petroleum, work on um, uh, drilling, regulation of the agencies, granting of licenses, and doing a lot of other things in the upstream, midstream, and downstream petroleum sector. And Mr. President is saying, if you are to take a total of, I mean, as much as 10% of the entirety of what you get, or what you realize, which money belongs to the three tiers of government, that it is excessive. And recall that petroleum product is about 80 to 85 percent of what funds the Nigerian economy, the Nigerian budget, and, and uh, 15 percent or 20 percent is what comes from all other sources. And even those other, all other sources, they are petroleum dependent one way or the other. Petroleum, hydrocarbons, gas, and all other uh, uh, somehow related. Even uh, internally generated revenue, even inland revenue. So if you look at clause 26, if, you, if I have your leave, I can read clause 26 of the bill because I have it with me. I have it with me here. Go ahead. The, the, the bill says, the fund shall comprise of, that is how the commission will be funded. A, such money as may be determined and appropriated to the commission by the National Assembly for its personal, for its personnel cost. B, fees charged for services rendered to holders of licenses, permits, and other authorizations. This one belongs to the commission. Income derived from publications derived by the commission from reviews and other related activities. It belongs exclusively to the commission. Fees for services okay. rendered Can to non-petroleum producers. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Please, let me conclude this. Please, call me. Now, I know your see, time. The way he says such money uh, shall, the, the one Mr. President has reservation about is such money which shall be 10% of the revenue generated by the commission for the government of the federation as may be determined and appropriated to the commission by the National Assembly. Mr. President is saying that 10% of all the money you realize, which belongs to the st federal government, state government, federal capital territory, the... Six, 707 local government and the six area councils that the well, money no, is too that, high. That, that point is clear. Yes. No, your, your point is clear. Let me ask you a question. Now, 
the Petroleum uh, Regulatory Commission will not be the only body of its type that will be uh, funded, that will take money out of its own revenue. You have customs doing the same thing. You have other agencies of government doing the same thing. But what you have explained to, to us now, you give the impression that this whole crisis over assent is all about money. It's about who gets what. Is that what it's mainly about in this regard? Thank you very much. Mr. President had also given reason that if you look at the funding of the Petroleum Equalization Fund, the Petroleum Equalization Fund is to take 5% fuel levy in respect of all fuel sold and distributed within the Federation, which shall be charged subject to the approval of the minister. Now, it is not only the reason, but now, okay, let me answer that question. It was on account of this that the Nigeria, that Nigeria made the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which states that every money derived by every organization shall be paid into the Federation account or Consolidated Revenue Fund or Special Fund, and from there it will be budgeted for. Budgeted for. That is why the, the, this was made in does 2000. It, does it not occur to you, Senator? Sir. Do, do, does it not occur to you that the reason the National Assembly included that 10% is to ensure the independence of the Petroleum Regulatory Commission. That is correct, but it is excessive. If you see, that, look, at what, look at what Federal Inland Revenue takes, keeps some. The customs keep some, at least 1%, 2%. And it, they don't have other sources of funding as is listed here. And again, if you look at the provisions of, this, uh, of the bill, if you ask Section 102, Section 1, Clause 102 of the bill. It says that the provisions of other enactments, it says the provisions of the First Fiscal Responsibility Act shall not apply to the, uh, to the, sorry, that one says that the National Petroleum Company is not subject to the provisions of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. That is the provision which says that whatever money you make, you pay into the account and you no, are you made, from you there. made that point. I yes, had sir. you. Yes, sir. You made that point. Yes. I had you, and I talked about the independence of the body. Yeah. Now, if you However, talk about the all the issues raised by the president in his communication to the National Assembly, couldn't these issues have been resolved long before now? Now, what would you do You were is, in the Senate. Yes. I, I was in the Senate, and remember, I have been in the National Assembly throughout the period of the, uh, of the life of this bill, and... The, most of these provisions were not there at the first inception of the bill. Now, there were submissions that were made by the ministers and the different stakeholders from the executive. And those submissions, with, uh, with respect, sir, most of those submissions were considered, but they were not uh, reflected in the bill. Because if you look at the submissions that were made by the, uh, by the Minister of Petroleum, by the Department of Petroleum Resources, by the Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Commission and the Petroleum Equalization Fund Management Board. Most of those things, what is provided here, does appear to be a, little, a lot higher than the submissions that were made. And that's why Mr. President is saying this bill will deprive other, agents, other tiers of government of the needed revenue. Therefore, it is inconsistent no, with the fiscal management. No, but you were talking about percentages today. earlier. Yes, sir. I mean, some, some, some regulatory agencies take as much as 7%. Yes. But if they take as much Isn't as 7%. is that the case? Yes. You are complaining about 10%. Some agencies take as much as 7%. But if, you're, if those agencies that take as much as 7%, which is, I think it is customs, and then, FIRS, uh, and then for in, in federal land revenue, I think 7%, and customs 4%. Yes. Those uh, agencies do yes, not have 4%. any other source of funding. This, that is the only exclusive source of funding for them because whatever they, they make, they pay into the treasury and after taking uh, that, that, that 4%. Now, this other one says, oh, the, oh they has other five sources of funding. This other 10% is in addition to the other sources of funding, you know. And they even say in the, in the provisions in the bill that the, the provisions of the Fiscal Responsibility Act shall not apply, whereas... The agencies, Inland Revenue and Customs and other agencies 
are taking this subject to the provisions of the fiscal, I mean, in accordance with the provisions of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. But this other bill says that one, Senate. the fiscals of this will not apply. And it also says that any provision of any other law which is inconsistent with the provisions of this bill shall not apply. This is one of the things that Mr. President says that there are drafting issues. And if you, a drafting issue arises when a law, a bill, or a subsequent law seeks in its own content to override the provisions of an already existing law, when a, a, an incoming bill Senator seeking Ina, to be a law. Senator Ina, yes, let, sir. let's go to the heart of the matter. Yes, sir. It seems to me that there are a lot of vested interests who do not want this bill. Because you know, yes, because if you look at the provisions, the Petroleum Regulatory Commission will now be the one in charge of issuing licenses to revoke, to amend, to review, which is the main power that the Minister of Petroleum holds. Yeah. Is, the, is the President declining assent because he doesn't want the powers to give out uh, oil blocks taken away from him? That's, that's, that's far and again not the truth. Far from the truth and not the truth. Now, there is in the commission, in the no, law, it is the functions, no, you, there, you there are functions reserved for the minister. There are functions reserved for the minister. And for the avoidance of doubt, as at today, there is the petroleum, uh, there are laws regulating the petroleum sector. And what this law has done is not to ex introduce exclusively new provisions. It is petroleum industry uh, bill, which seeks to bring together in one form, in one volume and one body of laws, all the laws regulating the petroleum sector. It is not totally, totally a new law. But what is new is that the funding provisions and other provisions introduced is far from the policy of the administration, far from the administ policy of the administration in terms of the fact that it is intended to make money available to all tiers of government, but it will be concentrating and making these agencies to have too much money, leaving just a little for other agencies, to, for other tiers of government to have. It does not have anything to do with the powers of the minister because the powers of the minister are stated there. And when the communication is read on the floor of the Senate and House of Representatives, you will also agree that it has nothing to do with the powers of the Minister of Petroleum Resources. After all, the function of the well, Petroleum you, you, you uh, the Directorate point. is there. Function of the Department of Petroleum Resources is there. Functions of the Petroleum Product Pricing and Regulatory Agency is there. Functions of the Petroleum Equalization Fund is there. Fun is all incorporated. It also is just fully incorporated and made part of this bill. But what is different? What is you, different you, you is the funding now. provisions. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. You said something just now that the law does not fit into the interests and the administration's uh, expectations of the administration. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is this is a that law for the Buhari administration or a law for Nigerians? It is a law for all Nigerians. It is a law. It is not a law that affects the president. It is not. The administration's policy is that monies that is, re is generated must go into the consolidated revenue fund or federation account and must be shared. And don't forget, if you read the provisions of the bill, it says that the money that they are generating, they are generating for the federation. Then the federation is made up of the federal government, state government, local government, and the area councils. And the money must go into the federation account. It is not money that should be kept by an agency of the federal government alone. Don't forget that the Department of the Petroleum Regulatory Commission is going to be one of the commissions under the Fiscal Responsibility Act, solely under the control of the, uh, Senator, of the federal Senator government. Ena, of the federal Senator government. Ena, and if it were so, I think the president Senator would have easily, uh, easily signed, believing that, look, all these monies will come to the federal government. But the president says, look, I am president for the entire federation, all the state and local government. No uh, agency, no tier of government should be cheated by a department or an agency of the federal government taking so much money and for its purposes. Well, Senator Enag. Thank you very much. It seems to me that there is a communication problem here. What is important to many Nigerians 
is reform in the oil and gas sector. Yes, sir. And the money that will be retained by that Petroleum Commission is just a percentage. You can negotiate a percentage. But you make it seem as if the Petroleum Regulatory Commission is going to keep all the money, which is not the case. And then you complain, the president also complained about legislative drafting. Is the executive trying to do the job of the legislature for it? The law, when it is drafted and assented to, becomes the law binding on every Nigerian. The question is, if you, there is a drafting problem in a bill and it is assented to, for instance, if you say that the, the, the commission shall not be subject to any law relating to taxation, which is contained in this bill, or some laws relating to taxation, which is contained in this bill, and you say that the prov provisions of this law shall, over shall supersede every other legislation in the country, that is a drafting problem. If you also say that the, the provisions of the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007, which regulates NNPC, and which NNPC and all other agencies of the petroleum sector are under, shall not be applicable to this. And that means that it is only the staff of the Ministry of Education and all others which are subject to paying tax, and that it is all other uh, agencies that can be subject to the Federal Fiscal Respons uh, Regulatory Commission. And it's a drafting issue when an existing law does not amend, which, when you are not amending an existing law, then in a subsequent law, you want to extricate an agency from a, from a completely regulatory a law applying to every agency. Uh, my brother, you know that as a fact, you know, I know you know as a fact that this is a problem. And if the president assents to it in that form, then it is not, it will cause problem, it will cause problem of interpretation, ambiguity, application, and even constitutional problems. I want, and let me also say that there is a back channel that we normally apply, which is whenever a matter like this arises, what we do is, the, the presidency does is engaging the National Assembly. And sometimes, or often, in most of the uh, bills that we've had this problem, we engage the National Assembly there is a representative from the office of the president, the uh, legislative department, uh, and the attorney general, and there is uh, my office. Okay, and there I'll, is the I'll, come, I'll, call, I'll come back. I'll come back to that later. Yes, sir. Okay. I should yeah, conclude because, that. Uh, you'll come to that. How later. you relate with the national assembly is very important. Yes, sir. Should I go? Well, on? let me ask you about the electoral electoral amendment, electoral act amendment bill. Yeah. Now, the uh, president has also declined assent. Uh, well, what would, is the problem with that? Is it legislative drafting that is the issue? As at this moment I'm speaking with you, the all, all is well with the electoral amendment bill. It is inappropriate for me to speak at this minute. And I repeat, it is inappropriate for me to speak at this minute. And again, I will say that what you have said is what we call in law leading question, and I will not fall into it. But in a very short while, you will know what has happened, and it is all is well with the electoral no, bill. No, but I was here to talk to you on the electoral no, amendment, on the petroleum industry no, bill. All, all is not well. All is well. All is not well. No, with all is well with the electoral uh, bill. Amendment bill. All is well with the electoral amendment no, bill. No, okay. Can I tell you? Can I tell you why all is not well? Um, you will, I will not agree with you if you tell me. Okay, I will phrase it as a question. Yes. Now, the PDP issued a statement say, saying that the reason President Buhari does not want to sign the electoral bill is because there are provisions in that bill that will make it very difficult for anybody to rig elections in 2019. You are what do you say, say about that? You are saying that to provoke me to say, to say the status, which I will still say, all is well with the electoral amendment bill. And in, within a while, you will get the true position in a while. But 
I am here to talk only on the petroleum industry. No, bill. but the electoral bill cannot be shrouded in, in, uh, in secrecy. I will not be, I will not, I will, okay, let me speak as a lawyer. I plead my privilege. Thank you. <laughs> you are on television. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look, I plead okay. my privilege. Let me also draw your attention to something. Yes, sir. The members of the National Assembly have said that the refusal of the president to sign the electoral bill as presented has implications for the 2019 elections because contained in that bill is also the approvals, the uh, financial uh, approvals for INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission. And that if that bill is not assented to, some of the equipment that INEC wants to procure which the uh, National Assembly in principle has now endorsed, it will be impossible for INEC to access the funds. Well, uh, you will still provoke I me. I don't know whether you are aware of this. I am working with the National Assembly on the supplementary appropriation environment which Mr. President presented independent of the electoral bill. And I, will, I can only answer a question on that. That, that this is independent and there is not dependent. And the bill is pending the, uh, the appropriation or supplementary appropriation bill in respect of the funding of INEC, National Security Advisor, the uh, police, the other security agencies is independent and is pending before the legislature. And the legislature is considering it. But I still say that in a while you will hear about the true position of the electoral bill, which will state the content. And otherwise, please let me still plead my privilege on the electoral bill. And you may return to the okay. Petroleum Industry Governance Bill if, you are, if, if, if that is well. Okay. I, will, I, will, I will still now, be now very I will. guided. I will still I'll be guarded and guided. OK, I will ask you a general question. Thank you. Clearly, there has been no love lost between the National Assembly and the presidency. Um, what do you think is responsible for this? Failure on your part to ensure harmonious relationship as the liaison officer or something else? Well, thank you very much for the question. The, what is happening is true practice of democracy, one. Two, the practice of where each arm of government is independent. Three, liaison. I have done the, my best and I have given my all. And it is not the failure of liaison. It is actually the activism on the part of all practitioners to make sure that the independence of each arm of government is maintained and the sometimes misapprehension on the part of the public saying that whenever there is a dispute or disputations between the arms of government, the public feels that there is no love lost. Each arm of government is doing as much as it can to protect the independence of each arm of government while they are working interdependently. Therefore, it is well. There is always no... Uh, what happens in one administration may not be the same as the other. And of course, the mode of constitution of the houses and were not the same like in the previous. Of course, there is in this Senate a situation where the deputy president of the Senate, the pre presiding officer, is of the PDP and the president was of the APC but now of the PDP. That means that the PDP is in the minority while the APC in the majority is not controlling the leadership or any of the presiding, two presiding positions of Senate President and Deputy President of the Senate. In such situations, you expect the kind of thing that you are having because there is political party interest always coming to play on the actions of, on, on the actions of, on the actions of what comes out of the legislature. Well, Senator Enang, before I let you go, one, one final question. 
rule of law versus national security. Where do you stand in that controversy? I will say that before I answer the question, let me, also, let me say that, conclude the matter that I wanted, that, which is that we are having an approach and uh, uh, applying the back channel approach where we have drawn the attention of the uh, National Assembly to this question that has arisen and we have agreed and we are working on a on how to resolve this. Ordinarily, if the, House, if the National Assembly did not adjourn on the 24th of July and the time of the President received the bill, which was about 30th of June, it was to lapse on the 29th of July, if the President did not communicate this back on the 29th of July, it would have lapsed on the table, on the desk, on the, on the table of Mr. President. So Mr. President communicated this back for the purpose of meeting the constitutional provisions, but it does not end the discussions with the legislature so to make sure that the areas well, of uh, this Senator thing will. And on the rule area. of law... Just respond to that last question, yes. On the, on the rule of law, the Constitution is supreme. So you agree that the president was wrong to have prioritized national security over rule of law? If you want to draw a conclusion, draw a conclusion stating what the Supreme Court and other courts have said in their interpretation of the Constitution. And I will not get to the interpretation of the Constitution as it is. I would rather say that there has been this argument. Mr. President had made his presentations and his submissions, and it is summarized by the fact that the Constitution and the judgment of the Supreme Court is overriding. 